morning, well, good afternoon, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Thursday, March 17th, the second Thursday of Lent, and it's the St. Patrick's Day, because it's the Feast of St. Patrick. So, if you're celebrating St. Patrick's today, you can thank St. Catholic, Patrick, a Catholic bishop from Ireland. Without the Catholic Church, St. Patrick's Day wouldn't be a thing. So, you're welcome from the Catholic Church. But since we already know a lot about St. Patrick's, or if you don't, feel free to look at my March 17th video from 2021. Um, and it's uh, and it'll be on there. Or from 2020, actually. This is my... Yeah, my last time doing March 17th. But anyway, we're going to focus on St. Jan Sarkander, um, who died in 1620 um, as a Polish, Czech, Roman Catholic priest. And uh, he was actually married for a short period of time before he became widowed. And then he pursued a path to the priesthood where he became active uh, in defense of the faith uh, during a period um, of the 15, 1600, 1600s of, you know, anti-Catholic sentiment and conflict where Catholics were getting persecuted left and right. So um, he was arrested on fat, on false accusations um, as a means of silencing him. And then he refused to give in to his tormentors who uh, tortured him for about a month uh, until he finally died. So I believe he is considered a martyr. Uh, but he is the patron saint of confessors, Moravia, and persecuted Christians. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Amen. There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tongue of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, my child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm has established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours, or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, O oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead comes, goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. So yeah, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the poor man, who even the dogs were licking his wounds and his sores, which shows kind of like how dogs are just brute animals, um, kind of um, downgraded from humans, which they are. Um, anyway, sorry, that was just kind of a spur of the moment side rant based on a conversation I had with somebody last weekend. Um, but we have this rich man who remains nameless, which I find quite interesting. Um, he's just referred to as the rich man the whole time. Um, and, uh, and But Lazarus is named, which is interesting, um, I think, just to, just, just to recognize that. Of if we humble ourselves, you know, you're going to be greater in heaven someday, you know, if you accept pain, suffering, not that you seek it out, but you, but you accept it as a way to grow closer to God and just grow in humility and trust and faith, you know, you, you will mean something in eternity in heaven, which 
might very well be why Lazarus is named in this scripture, in this parable. Then the rich man, who was living this luxurious lifestyle, who um, does not have a name, is sentenced to hell and eternal damnation. Which is quite interesting in the world of in which we live. About everybody wants to be rich and famous, and you know, you know, you, you know all the big names in the world. You know all the politicians, the athletes, the business people, whatever it might be. We all want that big name. But look how flipped it is here in Luke's gospel. That the one who goes nameless is the one sentenced to hell, and the one that gets the good name is brought to heaven. So it's completely backwards of what society is, which I think is something to point out, um, to see what is really important to God. Um, but then after this rich man recognizes how how painful eternal hell is, he's like, let me at least go tell my brothers to warn them, to, to change their life around, to change their heart and fine-tune it to the transcendent, to the upwards toward God. And Abraham says that they're not going to, if they didn't listen to Moses and me and the prophets and anybody else, they're not going to listen to somebody that's rising from the dead, such as Lazarus. And so I think what's important here is the way that we live our lives and our constant um, recommitments to God every single day does determine and kind of help dictate where our souls go. You know, we have to we have to be able to live our lives a certain way in virtue with faith in order to earn eternal happiness in heaven someday. Because it's very clear that heaven is not a guarantee. And we need to make sure that if we that we are living our lives in such a way that gets us to heaven, that is attractive to other people in truth and virtue, and not so much attractive simply by the material means. As we can see that the rich man with the fine linens and the purple garments and the fine dining didn't do it. So, all that being said, make sure you tell all your brothers and sisters now, as opposed to whenever it's too late. That is our Christian duty. Have a great day. God bless. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen.